the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, one true God, glory be to Him in the highest. My dear brothers and sisters in Christ Jesus, as we walk through the shortest Lent of our liturgical calendar, let us spend a few moments to listen to some lessons from the book of Jonah. In our calendar, the three-day fast is the shortest fast that we all observe, and it is observed as a combination of the repentance of the people of Nineveh and the mercy that God showed upon them. The three-day fast is placed 18 days before we begin the Great Lent. In this year, by my coincidence, this fast occurs 18 days after the Feast of Theophany as well. During this feast, we commemorated the baptism of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. We not only commemorated His baptism, but we also celebrated the revelation of the Trinitarian nature of our God. So with this background of Theophany, and as we look forward to the Great Lent, to the pilgrimage that we all undertake, to the cross on Calvary, and from there onwards to the Feast of Pascha, this three-day Lent is a call for us all to imitate Christ and not to imitate Jonah. How do we imitate Christ? During this three-day Lent, we look and learn from the life of Jonah. We try to understand his errors and we try not to repeat them. But do we really understand what were his errors though? When we look at Jonah, we can understand that he was a prophet who was called for a difficult role. He was chosen to go to a people who were not only his own, but were in fact his enemies. For he was called to go to the people of Nineveh, which was the capital city of the Assyrian Empire. And Assyria was an enemy of the, of the Israelites. Though the city was huge, the people were cruel and filled with lies and robbery. It is said that the atrocities of the city had risen to such an extent that the blood of its enemies ran down its streets. The city had gathered its wealth from pillaging and destroying its surrounding countries. Jonah was called to go among such a group of people and proclaim the message of repentance. If we would have been placed in such inner shoes, and if we were called to go to such a group of people, what would be, what would be our response? Would we not do exactly as Jonah did and run in the exact opposite direction? Would we not also shirk off the responsibility that we have been, that has been placed upon us by God? Do we not do that even now, now in life? But after learning that we are called to imitate Christ in our lives, should, be that, should that be our response? Jesus, just like Jonah, was also sent to preach the message of repentance and to reconcile the whole creation back to the Creator. He could have declined to lay down his life at the Mount of Calvary. But he being the true prophet, he willingly submitted his life in total obedience to the will of the will of his heavenly father and came to his creation as one of their own and spread the message of repentance and reconciled us back to our father through his sacrifice. Just as Jesus is a prophet, priest and king in the truest sense, we who are baptized with him are also called to be his prophets, priests and kings. And being prophets and priests, we are called to share in the death of Jesus Christ. Being baptized in his name does not give us any extra dignity or privilege, but it should make us able to wade into the depths of human sinfulness, not through our own strength, but through the strength we receive from the Holy Spirit. So to be baptized in Jesus and being called to be his prophet, priest and king does not place us in a net of safety, but it should place us in the neighborhoods of great suffering and pain. And that is where we will find Jesus. Lastly, we will look at the life of Jonah. We see that he preached to the people of Nineveh in reluctance and was hoping for their destruction. After preaching his message to the king of Nineveh only once, he went outside the city and was looking forward to its destruction. But when God forgave the people and the city, he was not short of showing his dissatisfaction to God. Do we also not look forward for the destruction of our enemies? Do we not complain to God when we see our enemies prosper with God's grace and mercy upon them? Do we not gloat at the sufferings of others? In the Gospel of Matthew, when Jesus was telling the young man the greatest of all commandments, the second greatest commandment he said was, to love your neighbor as yourself. And through the parable of the Good Samaritan, we are taught that every individual beside us is our neighbor, no matter his or her color, race, nationality, creed, and we are called to love everyone as ourselves. Do we ever wish harm on our 
on our own selves. When we do not wish any harm for ourselves, we should never wish harm for others as well. But instead, we should fulfill the role of a priest that is given to us and pray for their well-being. We should pray for God's mercy on them as well, because they too have been created in the same image and likeness of our Creator God, who has created us in redeemness. So to summarize my thoughts in the three points, they would be at the backdrop of the feast of Theophany and looking forward to the great land. In this past is a call to be baptized in Christ and to imitate Him in our life. Being baptized in our life, we are called to be prophets, priests, and kings, following Jesus in the suffering of and pain of human sinfulness. Third, loving our neighbor just as ourselves and maintaining the horizontal relationship with each other. May this blessed first help us to heed our divine call. and may the holy spirit guide us through his indwelling christ have mercy thank you